Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back everybody and happy new year. I hope you had a most excellent holidays. My name is Andy with Boatworks today and this week we're going to be picking up where we left off uh, well just before holiday. If you haven't seen that video or if you need a little bit of a refresher, I'll put a pop-up window right in here and with that said, let's just jump into it. Well, let's see how we did here. For all, I think this looks really good. There's maybe a uh, sixteenth of an inch, and it's even all the way around except for these two corners here. I'm touching right here. You can see how the laminate that we laid on the side here is a little bit thicker right in here. So I think I can kind of shave a little bit off in here to keep the same, same reveal going all the way around. It's consistent across the top. And here again, in the corners, I got a little bit of a touch, uh, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Well, that's the, that's the port side. Now let's see how the starboard side turned out. So the spacing along here, it's not as consistent. You know, I'm touching here. I come up to a little bit of a gap up in here, a little bit more than what I'd like. A little bit more of a gap here than I'd like, obviously. The top overall seems pretty good until you, get, again, get over to the corners and way too big of a gap here. That's, well. So overall, I'm gonna have a little bit more fairing to do on the starboard side than I am on the port. Uh, but again, that's just gonna be fairing, so that'll be pretty easy to do. And I think I'm gonna hold off and take care of that until these things are actually tabbed into place. Because after the tabbing, after the, I guess, the outside perimeter uh, part of this frame is tabbed in in place on the boat, uh, I'm gonna have to do some fairing anyway, so I might as well just hold off on doing this until I'm actually in fairing mode, and then I can just basically knock out two birds with with one mix. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so, all right, so now the lids actually fit inside the frames, so let's go see how they actually fit up on the boat, because really that's the part that's important. <laughs> all right, so here's what we got going on. Uh, basically, I'm getting hung up on this corner right here. It's just not dropping down, and part of that is because of this little fillet that I put in right here. So I can kind of dish that out, either dish out the fillet or kind of round out the back of here. But either way, it needs to slide forward just a little bit. I mean, that is awfully, awfully snug. Now, when we look up forward here, you can see I've got a gap along here and along over here. But where I'm touching is right here. Now, what I suspect is this little area between here and here. If I kind of dish this out a little bit, that will allow this piece to slide forward. And with a little bit of monkeying around, I think the port side is gonna drop right in place. Now the starboard side, uh, so when you look at it from here, I mean, I've got an even space, you know, pretty much uh, all the way down and around. If there's a gap on this forward edge, there's gotta be a way for this to kind of shift forward a little bit. I don't need much. I, again, like, the, uh, the all I need to do is shift it about well, like about a sixteenth of an inch, and then I think this will drop right in. But I think this is going to be a little bit more of a headache than the uh, than the port side. So I spent the better part of yesterday afternoon getting these frames, I guess, fit. You know, basically a little trim here, a little shave there, and right now, 
they're, they're fit, they're in place. Now, I wouldn't go as far to say that they are a, an absolute perfect fit, but for the most part, they're good enough. I mean, at the end of the day, when these are all glassed in place, uh, a little bit of gaps that you're seeing right in here, that's going to be irrelevant. It's all going to be glassed in, bonded in with thickened epoxy. So for the most part, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. So right now, I'm about at the point where I can start to actually bond and mount these, uh, these frames in place. But before I do that, there's three things that I want to get done. Well, well, actually, two things that I need to get done and one thing that I want to get done. The, the first thing that I need to do is I need to actually build a new cleat, I guess, to replace this. Now, right now, this was just a temporary uh, wooden pine board that I had stuck in place as a, as a support for the backside of these frames. Uh, I don't want that to be wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that and I'm going to re, uh, replace that with, with a material that's called G. 10. And essentially, if you're not familiar with that, essentially what G10 material is, is it's a solid fiberglass panel that I think you can get made in either uh, use, using fiberglass with either epoxy, polyester, or vinyl ester resins. Now, because of the, the, the G10 that I have, it's left over from this project when I was doing the demo, uh, basically the demolition. Uh, I don't know what material that was made with, if it was a poly, vinyl, or epoxy. So to be on the safe side, I'm going to be bonding all this and screwing it in place using thickened epoxy. Now, the other thing that I want to do or that I need to do, is I need to sand the entire inside of this locker on both sides. Uh, because the one thing that I want to do is, while I still have good, you know, good open access before these frames are actually installed, I want to paint the inside of the lockers as well as the underside of these frames. Because it's going to be a whole lot easier to do it now than after everything is in place and I'm having to paint upside down and have it run down my, amp, my hand and my wrist and just... Now is that time to get it done. Now, with these back supports installed, I'm actually going to be referring to these as cleats. Uh, but then, uh, just to recap, these were uh, quarter inch thick of G10 materials that I laminated together, and then they were screwed and then epoxied in place using the Total Boat Thick Soap. So with those in place, now I want to try and get some primer in here because right now everything is wide open. This is going to be the easiest access I'm going to have uh, while going forward to try and do any kind of priming. I'm not going to be doing any painting because I, I don't know what color I'm going to be using yet. And uh, the painting part, I'm probably going to end up spraying all that anyways. But for right now, the primer, I, I want to get that down. So come time for painting, I'm going to be using Alexio paints. And so going into this, uh, the primer that I'm going to want to use, just because I like, once I start going down a road with a particular line of product, uh, I like to stick with that line of products, you know, throughout from start to finish. In, in this case, it's going to be referring to the painting process. So using the Alexio paint, uh, what the primer I'm going to be using is their 442, it's their finishing primer. Now they make other types of primers, they make like a high build stuff and, uh, and uh, I think one or two other primers, I'm not quite sure offhand. Um, but the, uh, specifically the reason I'm going to be using their 442 is because it's able to be rolled on. Their high build stuff, that's really meant more for spraying than, than rolling, just because it's well, it's, it's a high build primer. It's thick. It doesn't roll out as well. But the 442 rolls out like a dream. All right, now the Lexil 442, it gets mixed uh, one to one between the, the base and the converter. And then you can reduce it. Uh, I want to say maximum that you can reduce it is up to 25%. Now, I, I'm not going to go quite that high uh, just because I, I still want to get a little bit of build. So I'm going to try and stick closer to like the 12, 13, 14 ish percent. So basically looking at uh, you know volumes I'm going to be mixing up. I'm going to do six ounces each of the base as well as the converter. So that'll give me a 12 ounce batch. And then I'm going to add in about two ounces give or take of the 5015 brushing reducer. Now the 442, this has been sitting on, uh, on a shelf here for a little while. I've already pre-stirred it. 
Uh, it, it does settle a little bit, as do most primers, if they sit on, you know, for any period of time. They will settle. So I've already gone through and, and given this an initial stir, so I'm just going to give it one final little mixy-mixy. So after applying two coats of the primer, this is how things are looking. Now, I, I don't have full coverage, and honestly, I didn't expect to get full coverage off of just two coats. Uh, but right now, I think I have a good enough base where at least I can get, uh, get the surface scuffed up, and it will be more or less ready for painting. Because, well, honestly, one of the reasons that I wanted to paint this or prime it to make it all a uniform color is because it'll be a lot easier to see if there's any surface imperfections, if there's any little pits or low spots, high spots, you know, that kind of thing. So now that it's a uniform color, it's going to be a lot easier to pick that stuff up. So I'll be able to come back in, do those touch-ups, and then seal it over again with some more coats of primer, and then it will be ready to paint. But that's going to be a little bit further down the road. So now, the last thing I want to try and get done this week, uh, because it's, what, 6.30 on a Friday night, and I've got to have this thing done and edited. Uh, the last thing I want to get done this week is to try and get these outside frames bonded down and in place. And this is just going to be basically laying down a bead of some thickened epoxy, setting it in place, and just letting it set up. Now, the epoxy I'm going to be using for doing this, uh, again, is going to be that the same material that I use for bonding in these cleats, which is the Total Boat Thixo. Uh, I thought about going, I, I went back and forth between using this or the, the Thixo Flex. And well, this one's open and I have it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use up the rest of this tube. And let's get this down so we can, I'm just, I'm dying to see what this looks like. <laughs> I mean, I know what it's going to look like, but I just, I want it in place. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this, uh, this side over here, this may look a little janky or sketchy, <laughs> but I think it's going to end up working just fine. I'm going to leave this set for probably a couple days. I want all the primer to fully cure as well as this epoxy, and then I'll come back and pull these cans and uh, well, con continue on. So uh, for right now, I think that's going to be the end of this video. So as always, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That does make a big difference. If you have any questions, comments, please leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection. <laughs>